Just when you thought we had explored everything in this great land called the USA and unveiled everything we possibly could, these videos come along. From shopping on a cliff to working underground, Da Vinci ostrich eggs to graveyards where ice cream goes to die. Historical Society, where Paul Chenard talked to me about the rare window that Vermont is famous for. Yep, you heard that correct. From sea to shining sea, it's all here. You won't believe what's waiting in your backyard. 15 Most Mysterious Things Discovered in the United States Eel Christmas Lights An electric eel in Chattanooga, Tennessee was all charged up with a little holiday cheer recently. There's a sensor directly in this eel's enclosure that picks up when he produces electricity. So every time the electric eel releases a jolt of electricity, a festively decorated Christmas tree next to his tank at the aquarium flickers and glows. The aquarium had already connected the sensor to a soundboard and a light board to correspond to the eel's bursts. It would light up on the board and make some noise so people can hear it when it's producing electricity. So it wasn't a huge leap to also have the eel's sensors connected to a Christmas tree for a holiday twist. To be clear, the electricity produced by the eel is not literally powering the lights on the tree. The sensors and other equipment are simply translating the creature's electricity to the lights. The tree sometimes emits small flickers of light and at other times puts out stronger, brighter bursts. However, the eel's joke can peak at about 800 volts. An electric eel will emit high voltage shocks in situations like self-defense or trying to stun a possible food item or prey item. So the tree is the brightest at mealtimes. The smaller flickers appear when the creature communicates with other eels or help detect their surroundings. These smaller jolts are only about 10 volts. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. The mysterious creature named Diplocolis was supposedly found in Texas recently. If you saw pictures without knowing anything about them, then you'd have thought it was something someone invented. There's one problem. It's been extinct for a really, really, really long time. It's an extinct early amphibian that lived 270 million years ago during the Permian period. Its name means double call because it has a very distinctive head that looks like a boomerang. Facts about Diplocolis include the one that's been theorized that its head was so unusual because it made it harder for it to be eaten by predators. A lot of the prehistoric creatures that swam in those waters probably wouldn't have wanted to struggle trying to swallow such an oddly shaped creature and would therefore leave it alone, opting for easier prey but well, do you think it could still be alive today like this picture would lead us to believe? Use the hashtag missing topic with your comments below. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? <laughs> Tallest peak in Kansas. Some people would describe Mount Sunflower as a barely noticeable rise in the middle of a field on a ranch half a mile from the Colorado border but those with better vision see something else. At 4,039 feet above sea level, Mount Sunflower is the highest point in Kansas. Now keep in mind, Mount Sunflower, although not a true mountain, is the highest natural point here. The state of Kansas gradually increases in elevation from the east to the west. Geographers used a digital model of Kansas to mathematically prove that the state is, as is often said, flatter than a pancake. But that doesn't mean the pancake is a perfectly horizontal one. In fact, it's tipped gradually by consistently upward toward the high plains, gaining over 3,000 feet in elevation from the southeast to the northwest. As such, Mount Sunflower, while the highest natural point in the state in terms of elevation, is virtually indistinguishable from the surrounding terrain. For over 30 years, the ranch owners here have erected a small shrine on Mount Sunflower. Amenities include a picnic table, a little free library, a sunflower sculpture made from railroad spikes, and a plaque on the site stating, on this site in 1897, nothing happened. <laughs> da Vinci Ostrich Egg Globe Researchers believe that this amazing globe could have been made in Florence, Italy. It's now in the United States and claims that the skillful engraver is connected to Leonardo da Vinci. The intricate etching on ostrich eggs joined together to make a sphere is the oldest globe of the New World ever to be discovered. Why ostrich eggs? Humans have used them for decorative purposes for millennia. The ostrich was a big thing for the noble people to have ostriches in their back gardens. The object is about the size of a grapefruit and is constructed from the lower halves of two ostrich eggs to make it almost spherical. 
Until now, the oldest globe showing the New World was thought to be the Linux globe, which is kept in the New York Public Library. But a study of this globe said that one is older. In fact, researchers think that this egg globe could actually have been used to cast the Linux globe, dating it to approximately 1504 AD. The globe reflects knowledge of the New World gleaned by early European explorers after whom the Americas were named. Latin inscriptions and delicate outlines of countries informed by knowledge of explorers such as Christopher Columbus made it in the early 1500s cover the sphere, but the origin of the globe is still a mystery. <laughs> siren so loud it caused rain. The main objective of this amazing siren was to alert the public in the most jarring and attention-grabbing way possible in the event of a nuclear attack during the Cold War in the middle of the 20th century. But this wasn't just any old siren. The Chrysler Air Raid siren was the size of a car. It measured 12 feet long and 6 feet high and weighed an estimated 3 short tons. The gigantic siren was powered by a 180 horsepower 8-cylinder gasoline engine that drove a two-stage air compressor and a rotary chopper. The compressor pushed 2,610 cubic feet of air a minute through a rotating chopper that sliced the air into pulses to create sound. The compressed air exited through six giant horns with a velocity of 400 miles per day. The first iteration, the Chrysler Bell Victory Siren, was used in World War II as an effective means of clearing fog for allied, for allied aircraft as the sound waves were so powerful that they would cause the water molecules to clump together and fall to the ground as rain. The loudness of this siren remains unmatched by any warning device ever produced. Some sirens are still located above buildings and watchtowers. Many are rusted, but a majority have been moved to museums and some have been restored to fully functioning condition. <laughs> Which windows of Vermont? Don't be too alarmed by this architectural oddity on an old Vermont farmhouse. As you can see, there are upstairs windows that are set on a diagonal. It's true, it's the crooked window tucked up under the eaves tucked in there at a crazy angle. The locals call them witch windows, which is enough to make anyone ask, where does that name come from? And why are these windows installed in the first place? Apparently, there's superstitious lore beyond that name, witch window. The story is that a witch on a broomstick can't fly through a crooked window opening. Therefore, if you had a house with a witch's window, you could live without fear that a witch could soar into the room on a broomstick at any moment. The windows are also known as coffin windows, although it's unclear if the name stuck because this is how they remove the bodies of the deceased to avoid steep staircase mishaps, or because the window itself has a coffin-like shape. But the reality is that this technique of adding a window at this orientation allows a builder to fit a standard full-sized window into the long, narrow wall space between two adjacent roof lines, not to mention avoiding spending extra time and money buying a custom-sized window frame. <laughs> <laughs> Makwi Marbles Travelers passing through Utah's candy-striped canyons sometimes come across a strange-looking sight. Hundreds of round, iron-coated stones often litter the ground. Often called Makwi Marbles, acres of the chocolate-covered rocks are scattered across Utah and Arizona. The stony spheres are concretions, sandstone balls cemented by a hard shell of iron oxide minerals. They tumble from the pale, cream-colored sandstone beds when wind and water wash away the softer rock. The marbles scattered on sandstone slopes are 2 million to 5 million years old. The marbles' precise age come from a radioactive clock. The iron oxide minerals contain traces of radioactive uranium and thorium, and these decay by expelling helium. Tallying these elements reveals the time since the minerals formed. The innovative technique may help resolve different models of how the stone spheres formed. For decades, the rocks were simply a geological oddity. Then, lookalikes were discovered on Mars. The milestone, among the early evidence for water on Mars, boosted interest in Earth's iron baubles, the Maqui Marbles. <laughs> Largest Abandoned Subway Today, these tunnels stand unused, beneath Cincinnati and Ohio, and urban explorers and adventurous photographers often frequent this unusual haunting site Almost a century ago, city planners designed the intricate subway system that was ultimately left as you see it now. But would you believe it? Few locals know about the vast, intersecting web of tunnels beneath their feet. But Cincinnati's underground railway system was once a grand plan designed to alleviate the city's notorious traffic. 
By the early 1900s, the infrastructure provided by the Erie Canal presented a potential solution. So they drained it and built a 16-mile loop that would allow travelers to get up as many stops both above and below ground. Six underground stations and around six miles of the original project were constructed before it was eventually abandoned. Cincinnati's economy suffered at this time. As the Great Depression waged on and World War II approached, supply costs rose and access to resources lessened, making the project seem even less feasible. The city's proposed rail system was ultimately abandoned in 1929, and this is what remains today. Shopping on a cliff. Extreme climbers at Colorado's El Dorado Canyon recently encountered a very surprising scene, the world's most remote pop-up store. You're gonna have to work very hard to get something from this cliffside shop. Unbelievably, it was hoisted to the face of the famous Bastille Wall, where a single staff member hands out sweatshirts and socks to climbers passing by for battling the area's sometimes harsh climate and conditions. Colorado is home to the Rocky Mountains and many canyons. One of them is El Dorado Canyon, the place is well known among rock climbers because of the Bastille Crack. However, the weather condition may change in no time. Climbers encounter wind, rain, and the temperature rise and drop. They may plan ahead, but you can't be fully prepared for everything. Well, that's when creativity like this comes in handy. The 6 by 10 foot store was assembled and was pulled up to 300 feet and hooked onto the mountain. The climbers were greeted with a warm smile, warm clothes, and encouraging words on their way up to the peak. In two days, the store handed out weather protection clothes to around 70 climbers. Plus, the stunt raised $15,000 for local climbing route improvement and for raising awareness on the issue of public land preservation. <laughs> the Town in One Building Views of the town of Whittier in southern Alaska and its true beauty are undeniable. Home to about 200 people, it's a dead-end station on the Alaskan Railroad and a stop on the state maritime highway. Many residents own t-shirts that say, POW, prisoner of Whittier, that is. It's meant to be funny. And most of the residents live in the Bejich Tower, a town under one roof, high rise. The thing is, Whittierites like to stay put because the tiny town is severed from the outside world in so many ways. It snows 22 feet a year here, more than a thousand times the normal national average. Residents don't even have to leave the building they live in if they don't want to. That's because Whittier, including its hospital, school, and city government, functions within one self-sufficient structure. The 14-story Bejich Towers Incorporated, known around these parts simply as BTI, soars skyward, interrupting the surrounding landscape of glaciers and Prince William Sound. BTI withstands six months of rain every year, followed by six months of snow and howling 80-mile-per-hour winds. It was built to survive bombings, after all. There are a few places to go and no one to see. <laughs> Invasive mystery worms. These are not your average earthworms. The name hammerhead comes from the distinctive shape of these invasive stalked curved heads, like a hammerhead shark. And like sharks, they stalk their prey, advancing on their own personal conveyor belts of slime. And you do not want them in your garden. The invasive worms aren't toxic to humans or animals, but they can prey on native earthworms and other soil-dwelling species. Earthworms and other little critters are very important for our soil health, and whenever you have a non-native species, like the hammerhead worm, that comes in and starts feeding on some of our native creatures, it can certainly affect our soil health. When they catch their prey, they wrap around them like boa constrictors and secrete a sticky mucus that contains both a toxin to kill and an enzyme to dissolve. As victims turn into disgusting goo, these worms drink them and then glide off looking for their next meals. In fact, earthworms and slugs are their favorite foods. They pose no danger to you unless you pick one up, as the slime might cause skin irritation. Due to the toxin, nothing much eats them except other hammerheads. A big one can stretch eight inches and be mistaken for a small snake. <laughs> Shoe Tree The delightful tourist attraction has been greeting travelers along Route US-131 in Michigan for decades. The tree is actually called the Great Leetsville Shoe Tree, and it's exactly what it looks like, a tree covered in pairs of shoes. The shoe tree is popular and notable enough that it even has its own social media. New shoes are added all the time. Sometimes you'll even catch a pair of rubber waders or even ice skates up there. The shoe tree is a much discussed and misunderstood symbol. No one can agree on what they really mean. 
Some say it's a sinister symbol, while others say a shoe tree is used as a type of makeshift memorial. But where did the shoe tree get its start? Is said by many to have started Michigan's shoe tree phenomenon by throwing the shoes of his victims into the tree after he'd finished with them. It's such a widely believed theory that the town actually had to publish a statement about it after many people had come in looking for more information on the shoe killer. But that killer never existed. That doesn't keep people from believing the story though. Now the tree serves as a place for people to stop and take photos and maybe add a pair of their own. Over the years, it has grown in scale and numbers, overflowing with its soulful decorations. Ice Cream Graveyard Ben & Jerry's has created a lot of very popular flavors over the years, but for better or worse, some of them have moved on to the great ice cream cone in the sky. And all that remains on Earth is known as a flavor graveyard. People take their frozen treats very seriously, and Ben & Jerry's knows this. And that's what makes this so much fun. Ice cream flavors, like everything else, have a beginning and an end. And this is Ben & Jerry's way of paying tribute to our dearly de-pinted. There's a graveyard that's haunted by the ghosts of old flavors that didn't make it. The US-based ice cream company marks the ending of its flavor in the funniest way, by burying them in a garden outside its factory. A tongue-in-cheek video by the brand shows people gathering together in a funeral-style setting with people mourning the flavors and laying flowers at the headstones. We get it. Nobody likes to see their favorite treats end up in snack heaven. There's also a virtual version on Ben & Jerry's website. Flavor experimentation comes hand in hand with risk, meaning that not so popular products can ultimately meet their untimely end. Why not commemorate the flavors fallen? <laughs> Underground Subtropolis 150 feet below Kansas City, more than 1,600 people work in the world's largest business labyrinth. This Opus business station was created through the mining of a 270 million year old limestone deposit. They basically work in the Batcave. Can you imagine working there? In the mining process, limestone was removed. The pillars, even spacing, concrete flooring, and 16 foot high smooth ceilings make build to suit facilities time and cost efficient for tenants. There are advantages to working underground. The temperature remains near constant and energy costs are lowered. They say it's a truly green environment because here are likely using about 75% less electricity than you would above ground. Mining began in the 1940s and in the empty space grew under the limestone bluffs on the Missouri River. And now it's home to more than 55 international, national and regional and local companies. Dubbed Subtropolis, it's described as the world's largest underground business complex. <laughs> Abandoned President Statues Not many people can say they have 43 giant presidential statues sitting in their yard, but that's not exactly what one Virginia man has. Now that they're out of the White House and on his farm, inspired by Mount Rushmore, President's Park was built for $10 million in 2004 so visitors could walk amongst 20-foot-tall busts of the presidents, plus other attractions such as an Air Force One fuselage. Secret Service Museum, First Lady Memorabilia, Wounded Warriors Room, and more. The busts themselves were created by a modernist sculptor, however doomed by a poor location and lack of visitors. The park went under in 2010. The busts were supposed to be destroyed, but Hankins, whose construction company worked on the park, suggested moving them to his farm in Croker, Virginia instead. So began the laborious process of moving 43 giant presidents, each weighing up to 20,000 pounds to a field 10 miles away. Holes had to be smashed onto the top of each head to attach them to the cranes that lifted them onto flatbed trucks, and they made the move to Hankins Field, where they now remain. It's not quite Mount Rushmore, but it'll do. Centralia A century ago, this was a busy small town filled with residents and brisk business. Centralia, Pennsylvania was once a bustling mining center too. Coal from local mines fueled its homes and its economy, and its 1,200 residents worked, played, and lived here. That was until a hidden, underground fire turned it into a smoldering ghost town. Centralia's streets are abandoned. Most of its buildings are gone, and smoke wafts down graffiti-strewn highways where a prosperous town once stood. The cause was something that's still happening beneath Centralia's empty streets, a mine fire that's been burning for over 60 years resulting in the devastation of a community. 
The fire seems to have started with a landfill, an abandoned mine pit that had been converted into a garbage dump in 1962. Centralia Council's method for cleaning up the dump was to set it on fire, and it sparked a much larger mine fire. It spread to mine tunnels beneath town streets. Multiple attempts were made to put out the fire, but all of them failed. As the years went on, the ground beneath the city itself became hotter and hotter, reaching over 900 degrees Fahrenheit in some locations. By then, it was too late for Centralia. All of its buildings were condemned. Its zip code was even eliminated. Bet you didn't know there was even more to be discovered in the United States of America, but we all know there's always so much more to be found out. So stick around so you can see what you can discover with more great videos. Mm -hmm.